As I just said, what we want to do is make sure we have our HTML page set up so that when we make copies of the page, we don't have to make lots and lots of changes. We can always change our CSS because our one CSS style sheet will apply to all the pages. But now we want to create this interactive story where we're going to have at least five different parts to the story. Uh, and so I want to make sure I'm going to be duplicating my index.html page a bunch. The about page I'll probably not worry about as much because I'll put, probably put my uh, citations in there. So I'll probably ignore the about page. Um, I forget what this example page. Oh, I was just demonstrating Emmet. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this file. So I want to, I'm going to have a bunch of different pages and I'll probably make a folder for them just to make it more organized. But uh, I want to make sure that I've got everything I need to create my interactive story the way I want to before I start building out the rest of my website. So let's take a look at what we've got so far and think about whether there's anything we might want to add. Um, so I'm going to open up the Elements Inspector. So I'm going to right click and go to Inspect. And we can see the elements here in Chrome. And so uh, just looking at what I've got. So the head section, I don't think I really need to do much here. It's got the title of the site. Uh, it's got the right meta stuff in here. Um, oh, I can see why I turned off this Chrome extension, so I wouldn't see this. So let's turn it off again. OK. Then I've got my link to my style sheet. So all of that looks good. I'm not going to worry too much about this. The body, I have a container. So remember, I want a container because if I want to change the, the overall layout of the page, Having a container is really convenient because I can change things like the margin at the top, which is right here. If I want it to be like 50 pixels instead of 100, that way I can just change the container and not have to change each individual element. I can change the width of the page using max width or min width. So the container is good to have to kind of keep everything together. So then I have two parts to my website. I have the header which has like the title of the site, which I'll probably keep the same. And then I have um, a little paragraph introduction. And then I have a paragraph that's the menu. So a lot of HTML, CSS tutorials, when you do a menu, they're going to make you do a list. Um, but I don't really want a list here. I just have a couple links. It's not a crazy complicated website. So I'm going to skip that for now. Um, maybe we can go over that uh, in another demo. Uh, so this all looks fine. I'm just going to keep this the way it is. So then my main content is here, and that's what I'm going to look at. So I have two links. So each part of my story is going to have two different possibilities. So that's not necessarily how it has to be. That's kind of how I'm setting it up. Um, but we could see in some of the examples, sometimes you have one possibility, sometimes you have like three or four possibilities. Uh, it depends on how you want to do it. I also have an image that represents the two different possibilities. Right now they're the same image, but I'll fix that in a little bit. Uh, but I don't have any text. So that's another thing you might want to think about is, do I want my user to be clicking on different images and making choices visually? Or do I want the user to uh, be clicking on text um, that you know has some sort of prompt? So a couple things I'm missing here. I might want some context, like right now, there's just two images. The user doesn't really know what's going on. So I might want to add like a paragraph before these uh, two links that will explain what is happening. And then after the links, under the links, I might want to have some text to you know further clarify the options here. Um, so that's what I'm going to add before I start duplicating my pages. And we'll see that some of the CSS rules we're going to have to change to adopt to what we're adding. Um, so let's go ahead and start doing that now. Uh, and then we'll start building out our story. So I'm going to go back to Sublime. And let's collapse this paragraph and just focus on the header. So in the main section, I have these two links for the two different choices in my story. Um, I'm going to put a little comment here and say choice one and 
choice two. And remember, you don't have to use images here. I'm using them because uh, I think it makes sense, but you can have more than one, two choices. You can have images or text. You have other options here. But I want to have a paragraph to kind of introduce the story. Um, so let's uh, start our story. So um, I'm going to say, once upon a time, there was a bird named Jerry. And so we have this little bird here. I might move these images, but I'm just going to go with this. And uh, so then we have to give the user a choice. Um, so just like in the example story, we can give the uh, user a choice of the setting to start out with. So um, Jerry lived in, and then we'll have uh, a couple choices here. So when I refresh my page, notice now my layout is kind of messed up because I had that grid set up for my main section. So I have this paragraph here now. And so when something like this happens with HTML, what we have to do is add more elements to organize our content. So there's a couple ways I could deal with this. One is I could move my paragraph above the main section. But that kind of breaks up my nice division of the header section and the main section. So the other thing I can do is make a new section for my choices and have my paragraph come before that. And then I can apply this grid rule for my main section to my choices. So let's try that setup. You could also just get rid of the grid altogether. You don't really need a grid here. I was just using that to put our images next to each other. So if I take out my grid rule altogether, then I just have you know a couple choices, but it kind of takes a while to scroll down the page and see everything that's going on. So what I'm going to do instead is update my layout and update my rules a little bit. OK, so I have my main section here. It ends down here. I have my intro paragraph. And so now let's make a new section inside of my main section that holds my two choices. So I'm going to make a div and give it the ID choices. So I can use that ID to select this div in my CSS. And then remember, once I create a new content section, I need to indent everything below here. So the fast way to do it is select everything and hit Command and bracket and move it over. But it's also pretty fast just to go to the beginning of each line and hit the Tab button to move everything into this new section. And then if I hit Enter and I close that div in Sublime, notice that Sublime actually matches this div to this div. It knows that I've created this new section. And if I close this section, now we can see my div choices here. So as our HTML document gets more complicated, we have to be careful about making sure that everything is going in the right place, that our divs line up. So this div matches this div. This main section matches this main section. It's really easy to make like typos and mistakes here. So if you do make some mistakes, don't worry about it. We can, we can fix them. Um, but uh, yeah, just make sure that you have kind of your syntax set up correctly. So let's go back to Chrome and refresh this page. So now it's looking a little better, right? We have this main section that's a grid, and now we have a paragraph, and then we have our choices. But what we really want to do is move these grid CSS rules to this choices div. So that's actually pretty easy to do. I'm just going to go back to Sublime, go to my style, and now I can just change this selector. So the rules are going to stay the same. But the selector is going to change. So instead of the main section, this is now ID choices. So remember the ID here is for, or the hashtag here is for ID. So hashtag choices is going to select this div ID choices. So I'm going to save and go back to Chrome and refresh. And so now we have a little intro paragraph. And now we have our choices. 
So for the CSS, you know, it's really easy to make changes. I don't have to worry so much that everything looks exactly right. Right now, I'm really just focused on getting the content in the right place. If I decide later, like for example, this text is really small, I'll probably want to make that bigger. But I don't really have to worry about that right now. I'm focusing on getting my HTML together so that it'll be easy to create the rest of my story. So I want to add one more thing, which is a little bit of context to these images. So I have this anchor tag. And if I click on this, it's going to take me to a page that I haven't created yet. And then I have an image that's inside of the anchor tag. So if I click on the image, it goes to that page. But I want to put some text in here too. And I can put even more content inside of that anchor tag and it'll still be connected to this link. So let's go back to our Sublime page. And let's make this anchor tag a little bit easier to set up. So I have my anchor tag here that links to this second page. And I'm just going to hit enter. So notice that Sublime automatically does this indentation for me. And then I'm going to go down here to where the anchor tag ends. And I'm going to hit enter again. And again, Sublime lines these guys up for me. So now I just have my image here. And I can add a paragraph below the image. Um, so for choice one, uh, we can say uh, New York as the location. And we'll do the same thing for choice two. So I have my anchor tag, hit enter, and then hit enter down here. So it's nice and organized. And now I'm going to add a paragraph under my image here. So I'll give the choice between New York and uh, where else could my bird be from? Let's say California. And then I'll use a closing bracket, close my paragraph, save this, and then refresh. And so now you can see the New York and the California, those both have the default anchor tag stylings, even though they're paragraph tags, because they're inside of this anchor tag. So again, I haven't created these pages yet, but when I click on either the text or the image, it brings me to this next page. And we could also, you know, if we want to style this, maybe we can make these paragraphs um, text align center so that it'll be centered below the image. That might look better. Again, we don't really have to worry about the styling because uh, it's easy to change. Um, but if we wanted to make a change like that, we could. So we'll worry about that later. So for now, now we've got a template where we can change the text, we can change the image. And so we can begin to create our story. Um, all right, so let's start creating new pages. Any questions before we get into that? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't here last class, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff I'm missing. Like, if you're done explaining like the stuff, like I would do a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I I can take a look at that in a bit. Um, so I probably posted the video, so, uh, yeah, so from last week, this is the HTML intro video, and you can see the HTML that we wrote last week here, and this is the CSS that we wrote last week, this is another video on more HTML, this is a video on CSS, so all the stuff that we covered last week is, is here. Uh, but you can also just grab this code if you want to just start from here. Um, so yeah, all of that stuff is on the Discord. Um, but I can take a look later as well. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So now I have this basic HTML template and I want to map out the rest of my story. Um, and I want to think a little bit about what the story is going to be before I start creating the different parts. So I'm going to actually make a little uh, map in Photoshop. And so when we're creating an interactive story, uh, we want to 
kind of map out the options because it can get kind of confusing if we're just kind of throwing stuff into random places. Um, okay. So, say this is our HTML page. Uh, and I'll just put index.html here. And I guess we don't really need the rectangle to be this big. And let's make a little group of this and call it index. So when we're mapping out our story, we can start with the index and then we can have like choices. So I'm going to duplicate this index group a couple times. And so the first two choices are between New York and California. Okay, why won't it let me grab the group? Uh, let's see. Okay, that's annoying. How do I get it to let me just grab the group? I feel like this is supposed to happen by default. Uh, what is happening? <sighs> okay. Interface. Okay. I don't know why it's not letting me do that, so I'm just going to do this uh, by hand. So let's just draw some rectangles. So we have a couple choices after our index.html. So we have New York and California. And we can use a couple lines. I'm just going to use the brush and draw a couple lines. And so when we're creating an interactive story, we can think about the different choices. So once I get to New York, we can have a couple choices here. Once I get to California, we can have a couple choices here. But usually, at some point, we are going to bottleneck over here at the end. And so regardless of what path the user takes, we usually want to end up somewhere over here. And so we can reuse choices. It depends on how complicated you want to make things. Like sometimes things can be really complex. Um, there's a good example of this uh, from, let me actually, this is from my video game class, but let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, uh, shoot, now I can't remember where it is. Maybe it's, um, oh, it's in here.
Hmm. Maybe it's not in here. Shoot. Sorry, I can't remember where this is. There it is. Okay. So this is some examples of different ways to structure an interactive fiction. Uh, so in this example, you start in one place, and then every choice just leads to more choices. And so this has the most kind of like options at the end, but it also means that you have to create all of this content. So there's a lot of, you have to create all these different endings. Um, so you kind of, your player kind of makes choices or your user, reader, and then, you know, the green choices are good endings, the red choices are bad endings. Uh, and so it's just constantly branching. So a more realistic approach is something like this, where you have some choices, but, you know, some, there's a lot of bad endings. This is how most, like, interactive or choose-your-own-adventure books work, where you, you know, you make some choices and then you get killed by a dragon or whatever, and then you go back to here and you make the different choices and eventually there's one good ending at the end. Uh, another complicated way to do it is to have a lot of different branching and bottlenecking collected in different places. So like you have a bunch of choices here, but then they all lead to one, you know, thing here. Then you kind of have a few different choices and then depending on where you go, you have more choices. So there's a lot of like complexity to this one, uh, but then you have a bunch of good endings and bad endings at the end, depending on kind of which way you go through. This is an even more complicated map. And this is a one where there's a lot of uh, sort of different navigation in between all the different choices, where it's not just like branching, but there's actually this kind of like grid where you can kind of go in circles and go in different loops before you get to the end. Um, and then this one, it's like you keep going around in the same circle, but, you know, eventually maybe there's a winning condition or a losing condition. So these are different, uh, examples for how you might structure. I'll put a link in the, of this into the Discord. Obviously what we're doing is way, way more simple. So what you're really thinking about is how many choices do I have before I get to the end? Or do I maybe have multiple endings? That's another possibility you could have is multiple endings uh, if you want. So it's up to you how you want to tell the story. Um, you know, you could have a couple choices and then just like go directly towards those choices. Or you could have some more branches in the middle. Uh, like we could have you know, some choices up here, and maybe they even share some of the same options. So maybe New York can go here or here. California maybe can go here or here. Maybe this only goes here, or maybe this has multiple options. So there's a lot of different choices you could make about how to structure the story. So let's just do a, a simple version of this. We'll just give the player a few choices. So the first thing that we need to do is make some copies of our index and then change the content. And this isn't the most sophisticated way to create web content, and it's not actually how most web content is created today. Most people use things that generate the content so you don't have to like you know, copy and paste a bunch of files and, you know, change them. Uh, but we're just starting out learning the basics, so we're just going to do some copying and pasting. So I'm going to leave the index here, and I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, I'll just call this pages. So these are all the pages of the story. And I'm going to make a copy of my index and paste it in here. And I'm just going to name these after the setting locations that I chose. So I'll have uh, newyork.html and I'll make another copy of this so I'll duplicate it again and call this uh, california.html 
And so let's get a couple images to use. Um, so I'm going to go to Google Images and search for New York. And remember to turn on the Creative Commons license filter so we can get Creative Commons sites. Um, so here's a cool picture of Times Square. It's very large. I don't need one that's this big, so let's get a smaller version. So let's go to the details page. And 600 is going to be plenty. So I'm just going to get this image and drag it into my images folder. And I want to put my uh, reference information. I'm going to put all the reference information in my about page so it's not like cluttering up my story page. And so this is Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0. Um, so I need to save a link to this and a link to the attribution. So I'm going to go back to Sublime and open up my About page. And let's get rid of this image. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to make a paragraph and say image uh, citations. And actually, this would be a good place to use a list. So let's use our list so we can cover some more HTML elements. So a list in HTML is basically just you know what it sounds like, a list. Um, but it has two parts. One is the UL, which stands for unordered list. You can also use OL, which is an ordered list. Uh, let's actually use an ordered list for this one. So an or the difference there is just the unordered list is just going to have dots, whereas an ordered list is going to have numbers. Um, and then for each item in our list, we use what's called a list item. So we can use li for list item, and then you can close the list item, and then all of our content is going to go in here. So let's get the name of this image. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I guess it's just called Times Square. It doesn't really have a name, so we'll call it Times Square. So I'll put Times Square um, by Tara Bass. And then I'll put the uh, Creative Commons info here. And then a link to the image. So for this one, I can use an anchor tag inside of my um, list item. So I'll put an A anchor tag href, and then paste in that um, link that I just copied there. And I'll put source here so I don't have to put the whole thing. And I think that should look OK. And then remember for an external link, so this is an external link we know because it starts with the HTTPS. I want to make sure that this opens in a different window. So I'm going to say target equals underscore blank. So let's look at how that looks on the page. I'll go back to my website and go to the about page. Oh, and I didn't add the style sheet here. Oh, and I misspelled source. So to add my style sheet, so on about.html, just scroll back up to the head section. And I just need to use the link tag for this. And you can see Sublime is filling in the content here, so I'll just hit enter. And then the href just has to point to style.css. Uh, and you can see it right there, style.css. So now if I go back to Chrome, we see those styles. And I don't have a container on this one. I didn't add the container. So let's put the container around this content so it matches the other pages. So I'm just going to make a new div, id equals container. And so remember, when I create a new section, I need to indent everything in here so it looks right. So I'm just going to indent everything over one. 
until I get to the end of that section, and then I'm just going to close this container. So if I click on this, so there's my div ID container, there's the end, and if I collapse this, we should see, so we've got the body and then the container. And so if I go back to Chrome, now this looks okay. So here's my image citations, Times Square by Terabas, Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike 3.0. And then I have to spell source correctly. So it's missing an R. And that links to my original file. So it's a little bit tedious, but that's what we have to do to correctly cite our images. So we've got New York. Let's get California. So I'm going to search California. Uh, and again, I have to make sure to be looking for Creative Commons. And let's see. This Hollywood photo is pretty good representation of California, so let's get that one. So this is public domain, so I don't actually even have to do the license for this one, but I will uh, just to uh, make sure to... Um, okay, it's, it wants me to download this. I'm just going to steal it. Or it wants me to sign in to download this. Oh, it won't let me do it. Okay, let's see, what can I do? I have to create an account. I don't really want an account here. Okay, let's see if I can open image in tab. There we go. Okay, so I'll just drag that here. I'm gonna call this california.jpg. I'm gonna call this New York.jpg. And so then we can add the citation uh, information for this image. Um, so let's see. So it's public domain. And then there's info here. So it doesn't really have any information. So I'm just going to use the Hollywood sign. And then I'll put the uh, Creative Commons public domain. So this is my second item in my list. So I'll just go to the end of my first list item and create a new list item. And this is the Hollywood sign. And then I'll just put in the uh, Creative Commons license here. So I'm just going to delete that extra part, and then a link to where I got it from, which is here. So I'm going to copy this link from the URL bar, and I'll put a new anchor tag here, href, and paste in that link, and the target equals underscore blank. And I'll put source here, and then close the anchor tag, and then close the list item. So Sublime Text does most of that stuff for me as I'm creating this. Um, we just have to create the list item and the anchor tag. So now if I refresh here, so now we have our first citation and our second citation. So that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our home page and put these images in here. Uh, so I'll go back to index.html. And I'm just going to replace these images. So I had my self-portrait in here as a placeholder. So it's still in the images folder. So if I go to image here, I'm going to change the source attribute. And I can open this images folder if I want to see the file names here. So I'll say images uh, slash New York dot JPEG for New York. And then I need to change the alt text as well. It's no longer my self-portrait. So I'm just going to take out the alt text and say uh, photo of Times Square just to give it a description. So then for uh, my second image, I'm going to put in California.jpg. 
and the alt is a photo of Hollywood sign. So that's the choice two. So let's go back to Chrome. Oh, and I got this wrong somehow, so let's go back and take a look. So, oh, I misspelled California in my finder. So in uh, Sublime, I can right click and rename the file here. So I'll just take out that N and hit enter. And now that should work. So uh, when you're naming stuff, you have to be really careful to make sure that you name it correctly because it's not going to be able to find it if you don't name it correctly. Oh, and I forgot to put in the images folder as well. So before California.jpg, I have to put images slash to go into that images folder. OK, so now I have New York on the left and Hollywood on the right. And then we also have to change the path of where these anchor tags go. So that's the last bit here. So for part one, this is going to New York. HTML, but this is inside of my pages folder, so I have to put pages slash New York.html. And for part two, I'm going to put pages slash California.html. So I'm going to save that. Okay, so now if I go to New York, we've got to fix a few things, but we can see this page exists, so that's good. And if I go to California, OK, so we have to fix a couple things inside of our pages, but we have got the links working. Um, so let's just do that, and then we'll pause here, and we can finish the rest on Thursday. So let's just fix up those pages, and then I'll let you guys uh, start to work on your own project. So uh, I'm going to go to newyork.html first. So one of the things. So when we go to newyork.html, notice that the style sheet disappears. The styles aren't being applied anymore. And so that's because we're inside of a new folder. So here's my style sheet. And when I link to index.html or about.html, the code I use is this link href equals style.css. And that only works because the style sheet is right here. They're in the same folder, so they can see each other. But now, if I'm on my newyork.html page, there's no style sheet inside this folder. So when I go to New York and I link to styles.css, the browser doesn't find anything because there's nothing there. So what I need to do is actually go back one directory into my main website directory. Or folder. And there's a special way to do that. So remember when I was creating the folder for my images or my pages, I said like images slash. So there's no images folder, but if I want to go backwards in my file structure, I can use dot dot and that will go backwards one directory and grab that style sheet. So now that's working. So I need to do the same thing with uh, California. I have the same issue here. And so this is actually what I mean when you have to have your page set up correctly, because now I'm having to make all these changes because I didn't have the exact right setup, and I have to make it on multiple pages. So I want to avoid doing this as much as possible. This is a pretty easy one, so I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to add the dot, dot slash to the style sheet here, and then go back. And so now my California page is working. And so I have to update the content here. So I can leave the menu the same and the header section the same. Uh, although, actually, I need to change one thing. So for my menu to go to the About page, it's not going to work here for the same reason. The about page is not in the same directory anymore, so we have to add the dot dot slash there as well. So now it's dot dot slash about. And since we're here, let's actually add a back uh, button as well so we can navigate around. So I'll just say dot dot slash index.html, oops, and call this back. 
and then close that link. So that way, uh, I can go back to the beginning. And let's fix that. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into newyork.html so I don't have to rewrite the whole thing. So it has the same internal link here that I have to fix. And if I just paste that, now we have the back button as well. So now I should be able to navigate around my page. So if I go back, I'm on index.html. Here's newyork.html. And here's california.html. OK. So now I actually have to update the content on these two pages. Um, so for now, while I'm figuring out the story, I'm just going to delete the content I have here. And I'll fill that in later. So I'm just going to delete all of that content. And I'll fill it in when I get there. And for this main paragraph, I can change that. So I'll say in New York, Jerry. Uh, so we'll have a choice between what Jerry can do. So we can say Jerry decided to. And then we'll come up with a couple options. Uh, we could do that on Thursday because we've already done a lot today. So we have in New York, Jerry decided to. And then we have a couple options that we haven't filled in yet. And let's do the same thing with California. So for this one, I'm just going to copy this whole section and paste it into California rather than rewriting this whole thing. So let's just delete this. So here's our main section. I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm just going to replace this with California. So let's see, now we have in California and in New York. Okay, so that's a lot to set up. We can finish up the branches on Thursday. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'll put this, I'll make a zip of this project and put it on the open, on the Discord so you guys can look at the code more closely. Um, so I'm just going to take the whole website and compress it and uh, I'll call this uh, website v1 in case we need to make more of them. And so last week I just posted the code on the Discord, but there's a lot of stuff in there now. So I'm just going to put this whole thing in here. So if you guys want to download that, you can take a look at the different files and get the code from there um, and start adding in your own content. Okay.